hello guys and welcome to another video on control systems so we'll be looking at this past question and past question we are giving um g of h g of s h of s equal to 2 all over s into 1 plus 0 0.5 s then 1 plus 0 0.05 s and we are asked to determine the phase crossover frequency the gain margin the gain crossover frequency and the phase margin so in this video we are going to build on the knowledge we've learned from the previous video but i'm also going to try and make it possible for you to understand how to solve it even without relying on the previous video so um if you're new to my channel um please like this video and subscribe to stay updated on more videos that will be rolling out um tonight on control systems now let's dive into the solution of this problem the stepwise approach to solving it so um we are given a particular g of s and h of s to be 2 divided by s into 1 plus 0 0.5 s then 1 plus 0 0.05 s and we are asked to determine the phase crossover frequency, the gain margin, the gain crossover frequency, and the phase margin. Now, if you notice this particular system, so this system is, okay, the system above is a one order system. Is that okay? The system above is a one order system. So it's a one other system because the power of s in the denominator is one okay so for which okay we are c1 is what 0 0.5 and our c2 second time constant is 0 0.05 so um just in case you might be wondering where all of this is coming from a second um, or one other system is a system that is represented in this form k all over s into 1 plus we have t1s and we now have 1 plus t2s so it's in standard form okay because it's expressed in time constant form and we can easily obtain the value of the time constants now these time constants are important parameters that will help us to resolve problems in this question very quick and effectively so um to start this problem since our system is in standard form and we've identified that it is a one other system this one other system has lots of properties that i'm going to be dishing out to you in the course of this video so stay tuned so the first thing you need to do is to determine the magnitude and the phase okay so first of all we are going to put s equal to j omega okay then determine the magnitude and phase so when we put s equal to j omega my gh of j omega i would have written g of j omega h of j omega but i'm just going to shorten it to gh of j omega becomes 2 divided by you have j omega into 1 plus i can have j 0 0.5 omega here then 1 plus j 0 0.05 omega is that okay so that's what i have here so having it like this i can call this equation one then i want to find the magnitude so to find the magnitude the magnitude of g h of j omega is going to be of course the magnitude of 2 which is still 2 divided by the magnitude of j omega is just omega okay and the magnitude of this complex number is the square root of 1 plus 0 0.5 square omega square remember the magnitude of a plus ib is square root of a square plus b square okay so why the magnitude of r j r is just simply r so that was the technique i applied here so the magnitude of a real number is just the positive version of that real number is that okay then the magnitude of this guy over here is going to be the square root of one that's one square then plus the whole of this square the whole of this term here which is 0 0.05 squared 
and you have an um, omega squared like this so having written it in this form you can call this magnitude equation two then you can now find the phase so in finding the phase the phase of gh of j omega is going to be so looking at equation one or let me just reproduce equation one equation one was given to us as two all over we have uh, j omega into 1 plus j 0.5 omega then you now have a 1 plus uh, j 0.05 omega okay so this is equation one so what we want to find is the phase now the phase of um, this particular real number the phase of a real number is zero so i can just have a cap zero here so the phase of all this one i will present them in just one big cap so the phase of all these particular ones okay so when you have the product of different complex number then their individual phases will add up to give you the phase of this entire product the phase of j omega is 90 degrees because you have um tan inverse of tan inverse of omega divided by zero then you have j omega and you want to find the phase it's just like saying zero plus j omega so tan inverse of imaginary over real which is tan inverse of infinity which is 90 degrees so the phase of j omega is just 90 degrees then the phase of this one is plus remember when you're dealing with phase of form products of complex numbers becomes the sum of their phase so the phase of this one is going to be what tan inverse of j omega the j omega the imaginary term is 0 0.5 omega divided by one which is going to be 0 0.5 omega and the same thing will happen in this one and now we'll be left with uh, this divided by this tan inverse right which is still 0 0.05 omega so tan inverse of this divided by this is 0 0.05 omega now you see the importance of expressing your um equation in the standard time constant form so that you can easily find the phase angle tan inverse of anything divided by one is that same um the tan inverse of that same thing so it makes it easier so it's good to convert it like this so if you resolve this okay by phasor mathematics you have this whole angle zero minus this whole angle here 90 degrees plus tan inverse of 0 0.5 omega plus tan inverse of 0 0.05 omega which will resolve to minus 90 degrees minus tan inverse of 0 0.5 omega and minus tan inverse of 0 0.05 omega is that okay so this is equation three so this is the phase of g h of j omega okay this is the phase of g h of j omega now um now that we've gotten all these stuff we are going to start with the first part of the question which is phase okay cross over frequency now phase cross over frequency for a one order system okay phase crossover frequency that's my wcp is given to me as the square root of sorry one all over the square root of c1 c2 okay if the system is of this form k all over s into one plus t1 s and one plus t2 s clearly our our system is actually in this form is that okay our system is in this form okay k all over s then you now have as, as you can see k all over s into one plus the first time constant and s then one plus the second time constant and s so our system is in the one order form now we know our time constants okay our time constants have already been defined so c1 was defined as 0 0.5 and c2 was defined as 0 0.05 so my wcp is going to be one all over the square root of you have uh, uh 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 so we are going to punch this on our calculators and get the answer so i have one all over 
the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 giving me 6.32 rads per second 6.32 rad per second so this is the phase crossover frequency for a uh, one other system then secondly you need to find what what we call the um, gain margin margin so the gain margin mathematically is defined gm you can define it as minus 20 log the magnitude of our uh, gh of j omega okay minus 20 log the magnitude of gh of j omega when um omega is equal to wcp so the magnitude when the um, crossover when the frequency is the phase crossover frequency okay so that's how to determine gain margin so this is the formula for finding gain margin and if you followed in the last video i defined that for one other system the magnitude of the gj omega function at the crossover frequency when w is equal to wcp is defined as k you now have t1 t2 all over t1 plus t2 okay so this is the formula for calculating the magnitude okay so if we use this formula taking note of the value of k back to our system the value of k is 2 and the value of t1 is 0 0.5 then the value of t2 is what 0 0.05 then all over when we solve this one we're going to have what very good we'll have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05 so what we are going to do is we are going to take this value and evaluate 20 log of this value so that our gain margin gm equal to minus 20 log okay then this whole value which is 2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 all over 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05 okay so we're going to solve with our calculator so we have 20 times the log reading in base 10 this is my log calculator is very funny but if you have a scientific calculator to help you the log reading in base 10 of this ratio 2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05 it gives us okay minus 20.827 okay i forgot to put the minus sign so since we have a minus 20 log that means this is supposed to evaluate to 20.83 decibel is that okay 20.83 decibel so this is um our gain margin so can you see the importance of the formula we established in the last video so that formula helps us to determine okay the value of wcp which is the phase crossover frequency and the magnitude okay at that particular frequency so the magnitude of wcp sorry the magnitude of um our gh of j omega at that particular um, crossover frequency is the magnitude that we are going to use to evaluate the gain margin so gain margin is minus 20 log of that magnitude so when we calculated that magnitude when we did some mathematical inductions we we're able to discover that the magnitude for one other system is going to be this why for um zero other system is going to be k okay root t1 t2 all over t1 plus t2 now if you're struggling between one other system and zero other system i've already established their meaning in some of the videos before this one in the playlist so just quickly look them up to discover how it was derived you don't need to know how to derive it just understand how it was derived is that okay because you need it in exams if you want to be fast so we found the um phase crossover frequency and the gain margin so what is remaining is the gain crossover frequency and the 
phase margin so i i i is gain cross over frequency gain crossover frequency so to find the gain crossover frequency to find the green crossover frequency so how do we determine the gain cross of frequency so this is this is sorry this is the frequency where the magnitude of our gh of j omega is equal to one okay so we are going to make these calculations if you make reference from one of those equations that we derived one of those equations containing the magnitude in equation two so we are going to solve for this equation and we'll equate it to one and determine the value of w that causes this equation to be one so i'm just gonna copy this guy over here Control c and i'm gonna paste him over here so it means that we are looking for the value of omega that will cause the whole of this magnitude to be unity. So in order to do that, you can take the reciprocal of both sides. That gives me W root 1 plus 0 0.5 square omega square, then root 1 plus 0 0.05 squared omega square over 2 is equal to 1 the reciprocal of 1 is 1 so cross multiply we'll have w root 1 plus 0 0.5 square omega square root 1 plus 0 0.05 square omega square is equal to 2 so take the square root of or take the square of both sides square both sides so when you square both sides you're going to have w root 1 plus 0 0.05 square omega square root 1 plus 0 0.05 square omega square all squared is equal to 2 squared so applying the law of indices you have omega squared here into sorry nice you have omega squared into so a square will cancel out this square root so you have 1 plus 0 0.05 omega squared then a square will cancel out this square root you have 1 plus 0 0.05 what am i writing yes i saw the mistake thank you is equal to 2 squared is 4 so i've been making a mistake here is 0 0.5 and here is 0 0.5 that key so thank you for that correction now um to make the process of solving this equation easy replace um w square with y so replacing it with y will give me y into 1 plus 0 0.5 squared y and you now have 1 plus 0 0.05 squared y equal to 4. so let's do the expansion and solve for y so y will be 1 times 1 is 1 then plus if you open the brackets you have 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.05 squared all into y then you now have this times this 0 0.5 squared multiplied by 0 0.05 squared then multiplied by y squared so if you do the expansion you should get this and everything is equal to 4 so we'll now have our y into 1 plus so if i add these two up with my calculator 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.05 squared so what will i have 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.05 squared you have 0 0.2525 so you now have 1 plus 0 0.2525 y then plus if i multiply this by this i just need to change this sign to times and it gives me 0 0.000625 0 0.000625 y squared equal to 4 so expanding the bracket and I'll rearrange in terms of decreasing powers I'll have 0 0.000625 y cube okay 
uh, plus the next one will be 0 0.2525 y squared and the next one will be plus this will be a y 1 times y is y and i'll bring this 4 behind minus 4 equal to 0 so i have a cubic equation in terms of y to solve this cubic equation in terms of y there's no need to stress you can use a scientific calculator so i'm going to use a scientific calculator like our casio es calculator so uh this is the calculator over here so if you can see the calculator i'm pressing my mode uh, my mode then um, i'm going to press uh, for equation i'll press five and i'm going to choose my cubic equation right yeah that's uh, a four so the coefficients of the first one is 0 0.00625 the coefficients of the second one if i can remember is 0 0.025 um, 25 that's the coefficient of the squared term okay then we have the coefficient of the third term is one and the last term is minus four okay now you get this value and you get this value and you get this value and get this value now take note of something calculators are different in my own scientific calculator i was getting complex values but if you look at the imaginary part of that complex number the complex number will be very very small you'll be seeing like 10 raised to the power of minus 15 10 raised to the power of minus 10 and all those stuff so you can neglect the imaginary parts and just focus on the real part so that's why calculators like this which does not have much memory like this system based calculators they'll just wrap it up to the nearest real number so you're going to focus on the root that is positive discard other roots or focus on the roots where the real part is positive and you're going to choose the positive real part and since the imaginary part is very very small you're just going to focus on the real part so the only value that is acceptable out of all these uh, values we have minus 399 i don't need it is negative I will work with this one 2.4611 and I don't need this one and that's all so I'll work with um, my y solves to 2.4612 approximately is that okay so recall that y is equal to omega square and that's 2.4612 so, so if we find the positive square root of omega we'll have the square root of 2.46 one one which is going to be what so let's use the other calculator for this the square root of 2.4612 that's a 1.569 is that okay so you have 1.569 so this is the value that would make this um magnitude one so if you do the substitution of omega equal to 1.569 into this equation you're going to get approximately one so that's how you will know that um, you are actually on track so this value that makes this magnitude one is called our what gain crossover frequency so our w is now going to be w cg gain crossover frequency which is 1.569 radians per second is that okay so now that we found it finally we now want to find the phase margin the phase margin so iv phase margin so to solve for the phase margin remember that your phase margin phi m or some people use pm is still the same thing as 180 plus theta and this can be expanded as 180 degrees plus theta is actually the phase of your g h g h of j omega okay when omega is equal to omega c g so the phase you want to find the phase when the frequency is the what very good the gain crossover frequency this is the frequency we just evaluated now if you make reference to um the expression for the phase of j of j omega if we make reference to let's say equation 
3 for instance okay that's equation 3 over here I'm going to copy equation 3 because equation 3 is the equation that gives me the phase of my g of j omega is that okay so I'm going to copy it so what am I going to do with it I'm going to use it to evaluate what very good I'll use it to evaluate the phase at this particular frequency so remember that our expression for the phase is this so if you want to find um, theta when omega is equal to WCG and WCG is 1.569 so you just have minus 90 degrees minus tan inverse of 0 0.5 bracket 1.569 minus tan inverse of 0 0.05 bracket 1.569 now okay so let's use a scientific calculator to determine this so we now have minus 90 degrees minus arctan arctan 0 0.5 times um, 1.569 we now have minus another arctan we have 0 0.05 times 1.569 and this gives me minus 132.59 so this is roughly minus 132.6 degrees is that okay so we've gotten this so the implication is that my phase margin which is phi of m is going to be um, 180 degrees plus this angle which remember we established is negative minus 132.6 degrees so when you evaluate this answer minus 132.6 plus 180 degrees you're going to get 47.4 47.4 degrees as the phase margin. Is that okay? So let's make some conclusions about the system. So the gain margin of the system was, I think, um, we got around um, 20.83 decibel. Then we got the phase crossover frequency as this crossover frequency as. 6.32 radians per second now the phase margin we got of course it's looking at us here 47.4 degrees and the phase crossover frequency that's the wcg is going to be um what do you have yes 1.569 rad per second okay so with these values since gain margin and phase margin are both positive anytime you calculate the phase margin and the gain margin and they are positive the implication is that our system is stable okay so this is how to discuss stability using phase margin and gain margin so this applies to a one order system now if you're giving a zero order system something like k all over s plus sorry k all over one plus t1 s and let me say one plus t2 s now the calculations will change a little your calculations will change a little but one thing will be constant your wcp will still be one all over square root of t1 t2 then your magnitude your magnitude of g h of j omega at this particular wcp it's going to change to k root t1 t2 all over what t1 plus t2 now when we are dealing with um, one other system that one that had s here there was no root okay but anytime there is no s there is going to be roots and you're now going to follow the same procedures like we did to calculate other parameters here so take note of the kind of system you're giving so that you know the right formula to apply in solving and determining the values of your phase crossover frequency and 
the gain at the phase crossover the sorry the magnitude of the um, function at the phase crossover frequency so i hope you learned something in this video um please like and subscribe and in the next um, video we'll be exploring a little more about stability and uh till then see you take care